Hello, Terry Caliendo of Dedicated Managers here again. And uh, in this video, I want to show the other recent updates, which are uh, I added a checkbox and a drop down menu system. So I'll just show those working in action real quick with the database. So I've got the database open here. Uh, I've got or the back end database, and I've got my front end over here. You'll see when I click to check the, um, the box, it immediately shows up in the database uh, as a change. And when I uncheck it, it switches to false. You saw that there. And then the drop down menu, um, you click on it and it shows a list of uh, different things that you can choose. When I choose it, you see it got updated there. So I'll change it to one and it gets changed to one immediately. So it's still real time with everything. Uh, let's take a look at the code real quick. It was pretty easy to implement. Um, I just went to beautify. Let's make this full screen and uh, found their, um, what is it, is under forms? I think it's under, uh, let's see here, inputs and controls. And if we grab the selects, that is for the select system and the selection controls, I believe is the checkboxes. So that's where you find it in the documentation. You can just go and grab the code. So for that checkbox, you can just go and get the, the code. It's real simple. Um, and it's wired through the V model. So it's all the same. I'll pull up my code here. And here is the checkbox. It's, um, you know, wired to my V model through the navigator program variable, which um, I am not in my data section. I don't have it in my data section. I have it in my computed variable section, which reaches out to the store so that the get and the set manipulate the store, the VUX storage, which ultimately um, affects the database. Um, so here it is, the navigator program checkbox. Uh, it gets it from the store and then it sets it the same way it sets everything else. So same with the um, client type at intake, which is that select drop down menu, the get and the set, all these get and the sets are all pretty much the same. They just pass the, the value as an object to this, to this function, which updates the primary caregiver object globally. And I also uh, moved You'll see there's no more on um, at key up or on changes would be on these things. I took those out because I realized I don't need to call those because these get functions, every one of these, these set functions, I mean, every one of these set functions calls this update current primary by object. So I just put the, um, I've just put that in the store after updating the object. So, whoops, that was probably it before. Uh, nope, I've got the wrong thing here. What did I copy? I copied the, yes, I want to dispatch, update primary caregiver relative by update. There we go. So here where it updates, I talked about this before. This is it. It passes in that property of what it's going to update. And then right after it, I just have it set the, um, the, this, this current primary relative caregiver whole thing gets set to the store. So before I had submits here, or I had um, you know at key up or at input, I think it was at key up last, and then it called the submit function, which ultimately just called this. Um, and I can actually show that in the probably the diff file of where I added it. Here it is here. Uh, if we look, so see how it had the submits before. Those are all gone. I had changes on the checkboxes. So red is what's gone, green is what's new. That's the change. So it just basically, I, this got taken out. Um, and the key ups, these, all these key ups, they got removed. And so um, this is what's left. Same thing, just without the key ups. And then in the store, um, this is what it looked like before. Update current primary relative caregiver. Um, actually, no, this, yeah. 
So this is what it was before. This is what it is now. I don't know why they're split like that. Um, but you can see the update current primary, the four update current primary for it's that it's all the same up to this point. And then I just added that um, the dispatch to commit and save it to the database. So that was creating everything, um, getting rid of a little bit of extra code. So that takes care of most of that. Let's talk about, um, where is this back again? So that's the checkbox and the select. The only other thing to talk about on the select really is the select needs to get its items from somewhere for the drop down. So these items here for the drop down have to come from somewhere and it's simply you just assign it as an items variable uh, and that currently I just have hard coded ultimately I'm going to probably reach out to the database to get that but that is currently hard coded as a, a um, as a local data variable right there so um, that's where that comes from and then it's, it's all the same the V model handles all the the updates same in the select as it was in the checkbox I showed that earlier that um, you know, it's, it's all the same. It, it works great. It's, it's really easy to work with. Um, you know, same as all my, all my um, computed variables here. Uh, they all look exactly the same except for their, their name changes. And in fact, there is a plugin I can get that will allow, make this even easier. I just haven't implemented it yet. Um, so we'll, I'll look into that in the future. Anyway, that was the update there. So uh, to again, Terry Caliendo signing off. Thanks a lot. Hope you uh, found this at least a little bit valuable. I know I tend to get a little bit long and verbose and um, uh, maybe I missed a few things or got off track, but uh, just doing the best I can with a short amount of time. So hopefully it's helpful. Take care and have a great day.